Hello children, thank you very much for joining me again today. A bit blowy, a bit chilly. Oh, it's went flying then. I was going to ask you, are you any good at catching? Because <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> it's a very funny shape. It's actually um, a cat toy which I bought the other day for our Freddy. And he couldn't be bothered, he couldn't be less interested. And I sort of tease him with it and I roll it around. No, he can't be bothered. We used to have a dog and the dog could catch anything at any distance. He was amazing. Freddy, he just won't practice. <laughs> so he's no good at catching. Um, we're going to come across the concept of catching in today's story. I'll just leave that there. The wind might blow it off. That's the only thing. If you remember, we've been thinking about Gideon. And Gideon had a special visitor, didn't he? That came to talk to him and to tell him that he was going to uh, defeat the Midianites. So it's easy. Gideon, Midian. They rhyme. And um, if you remember, Gideon made absolutely certain that it was God who was telling him this by putting out the fleece, if you remember. And uh, so he's accepted now. He's, he accepts the mission uh, that God is going to use him to be a great hero in Israel. Um, but what, what is the mission? What will it look like? <laughs> so, well, Gideon was surprised at the first thing that God told him to do. It had nothing to do with raising an army to fight against Midian. It was something even more important than that. The people who lived in Gideon's town had copied the Canaanites. Ooh, in their worship of the Baals, the Baals were false gods, not gods at all, but they were worshipping these Baals. Gideon's own father, who was called Joash, had an altar for Baal built on his own land. Gideon, God said, you must begin by pulling down that altar to Baal and cutting down the sacred trees. They had these trees all around the Baals and they'd made a big worship space of it, dedicated to the goddess that grow beside it. Then build a good, strong altar to me in its place. Gideon made up his mind to obey God. Well, that's good, isn't it? He wanted to bring the Israelites back to the true worship of God, as well as rescuing them from their enemies. But he was afraid. He knew that the people of the town would be very angry. They would be sure that something terrible would happen to them if the Baal altar was destroyed because they believed that the Baals were strong and powerful in the land. So Gideon decided to do what God had told him at night time, when no one would see. He took ten, he took ten of his servants to help him, and in the darkness they worked as quickly and quietly as they could. First they smashed the altar to Baal, and they chopped down the trees all around it. Then they built a strong altar to God on the very same spot. Before dawn broke, they crept silently home. But a secret known to ten men is not a secret for long. Soon, everyone knew what had happened, and they all knew who was to blame. And that very morning, the townsfolk came knocking at Joash's door. That's Gideon's dad. I don't suppose it was as polite as that. I imagine they were really beating the door down with their fists. Bring out your son, Gideon, they shouted. We're going to kill him for what he has done. Well, whatever Joash may have thought before, he now spoke up bravely for Gideon and for God. Are you taking Baal's side, he asked. If he's really a god, he can stand up for himself. He's the one whose altar's been smashed. Let him punish my son, if he can. Gideon's courage and trust in God was catching. Soon he would show all the people of Israel what God could do. So did you hear that word catching? It was catching. The people needed that leadership, didn't they? They'd fallen into all the wrong ways and they'd forgotten all about God. And Gideon is the one who's bringing them up short. He's got rid of the, the Baal altars. He's got rid of the trees. He's reminded them you've got to put God first, the true God. And in fact, the altar to God is in the very same spot where the Baal altar was. That's 
quite good, isn't it? Because we have to replace all that with true worship of God. And his courage is infectious. It's catching. So my cat isn't very good with that ball, but we can catch courage from one another. We have to help one another and support one another, pray for one another and remind one another what a great and wonderful God we've got. He can do anything. He can do all his holy will. So that's a lovely story. Come back tomorrow to find out what happens next. We're just going to say a prayer now. So hands together and eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can get all the courage we need from you, Lord. And we thank you for those people around us who are courageous and who are brave and who do stand up for what's right. We thank you for them, Lord. And we thank you that courage can be catching. And we pray that we will encourage one another. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to say the blessing. L -l -l. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you safe. The Lord give you his peace till we meet again. Amen. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.